Welcome to the Tony Gaskin Show, best-selling author, celebrity life coach, and international speaker. The purpose of this show is to bring you motivation, inspiration, and education in the areas of life, love, and business. Thank you for joining me. Now let's get started. Hey, hey, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Talks with Tony. Got a question today, and it says, Dear Tony, I have two of your books and love your content on YouTube. I have recently discovered your podcast, and I thought I'd reach out to get your opinion on my situation. I have had two sexual partners in my life. The first person I slept with I contracted herpes from, and the second person I slept with is my long-term partner that I have been with for four years. I have been a coward and haven't had the strength to tell him I have the virus. We have been sleeping with each other with a condom throughout the time we have been together because he is afraid of pregnancy. But we have agreed once we marry to get rid of the condom. We have heavily been talking about marriage, and I have a feeling he will propose this year, but I feel terrible that I haven't told him I have the virus in my immune system. I haven't had an outbreak in a very long time, and I've never put him at risk, but as I get older, I am developing a heavy conscience. Because if the shoe was on the other foot, I would have liked to known that information about someone I chose to have as a partner. I know you may not have the virus, but as someone that is in love, what would you do if you were told this information? I look forward to your reply. Thank you in advance. Thank you so much for sending in your question. Um, such a deep question. And I really appreciate you asking it. And, you know, I, it's not a lot of men who are that afraid of pregnancy that they use a condom for four years like that. That is some serious dedication. I mean, I was not that type of guy. I mean, I was shooting shots and I was afraid of pregnancy, too. But, you know, in the moment, you know, you just kind of feeling it and you just go with the flow. You know, and, and my wife and I, we had an unexpected pregnancy. Um, come to find out, she said that her mother just never talked to her about, you know, sex. And so she really didn't understand, like she didn't know, like about a condom and, and all of those things. Like it just wasn't, she didn't fully understand it. And so didn't really know how to say, hey, you got to wear a condom. And me, I knew all about it, but she looked at you know, good enough for me. I'm like, I am a cute baby. So I'm taking shots from deep. And so here I am in here and we, we're we having sex and I'm thinking about, okay, a baby could come and every guy I'm talking to, you know, guys just taking their chances. And so to hear that this guy has been wearing a condom for four years to be honest with you, I you don't really know if he has something that he doesn't want to tell you about and that he's protecting you from. And that's the one thing with this issue I've read in places. I've read that up to like 50 percent, you know, I've read 50 percent of people have herpes. And now I don't know how accurate that is, but I know I have coached several individuals who have herpes. One thing I know is that out of all of the individuals, I don't think I've ever met a man who admitted to it. And that is something that men typically will not admit to. That Women, you all are just different in that way. And I know now, because see, you got to realize you got herpes from your first sexual partner. But did he tell you he had herpes? And I've coached so many women who caught herpes from a guy and they know the guy that gave it to him because he was their sexual partner when they contracted herpes. But the guy never told them. And then even after contracting herpes from the guy and tell the guy I have herpes now, 
from you. The, the guy, oh, I don't have herpes. I don't have herpes. You don't, you don't see anything on me. You don't see anything on me. I don't have herpes. And then explain it to them, well, it doesn't have to show up like that. It doesn't have to show in you. You can carry it without having, you know, a breakout. Oh, no, that ain't true. That ain't true. If I had herpes, it'll, it'll do this or it'll do that. And so, to be honest with you, a lot of people may have the same issue and not be, you know, sharing it, may not share it with their partner. So you really have to ask, I mean, to be honest with you, at this point in the relationship, which I've seen it happen, it can completely change the trajectory of your relationship. It can change the trajectory of your relationship. Um, you know, I had an ex in the past who contracted herpes from a guy and she didn't tell me. And thank God that I never contracted it, you know, because it would have been without my knowledge. Our relationship ended, but it didn't end because she told me that. You know, it ended because we just was a toxic relationship to begin with. I mean, it was just a terrible relationship, fussing, fighting, arguing all the time. But, you know, she had a breakout and she told me. And so that's when I learned up close and personal about the issue and learn how just like you and him have been sleeping together for four years and he hasn't contracted it, that it is a type of, you know, disease that, is is contagious, but you can have a functional relationship with it. And to be honest with you, as a guy, when I heard it, it didn't really floor me. Like it didn't shock me because I know that men can carry stuff and not know it. Now I had to go and get tested and the doctor said, Hey, you're all good. You're clean and clear. But when she first told me in my mind, I was thinking like, uh, I wonder if she got this from me. Cause I had been out there. So when you tell this guy, you know, if you tell him, he may think that it's a possibility he was carrying it somehow. And the contact, you know, from his pelvis to your pelvis or whatever, um, could have brought it. Now, if you tell him it come from another guy and then you tell him that, you know, it's been four years that you've had this and you've known it and you didn't tell him, he could get very, very upset and like, man, you put me at risk. You should have told me. But then at the end of the day, it's kind of like, truthfully, if you tell a guy in the first month, in the first three months, first six months, he hasn't developed any love for you. And nine out of 10 times, he's going to leave unless he has the same issue. And I've had clients who have told their guy and they said the guy didn't care. And he just said, well, we'll just use a condom and you know, and that's how some guys will respond. But now four years in, he may have, you know, some anger and resentment. And this is what you have to be mindful of. What you have to be mindful of is if you tell him, you know, if you tell him, he starts to treat you differently. He starts to be verbally abusive or disrespectful. I mean, you can't really blame him, but that doesn't mean you should stay and put up with it. So you still have to leave that situation. You have to realize like, look, I, I ruined this situation because I didn't tell him. Now I tell him and he's extremely upset and now he's kind of becoming abusive or aggressive or disrespectful and I just can't deal with that. Like don't stay in a toxic situation just because you're internalizing the blame because you didn't tell him something. And so, and if you tell him, you can explain to him, like, look, I, I just really, really care for you. I didn't want to lose you. You know, this, and a lot of people don't have an understanding about this, you know, issue. And they think that it's just this, like, walking, you know, contagious, super contagious thing. But as you see, in four years, you know, you haven't contracted anything, and it's under control, and I don't have breakouts but it's just the stigma around it that makes it seem so like, you know, nasty and disgusting when 50% of people, it's said that 50% of people have it. And so now if you clearly explain it, you have some write-ups on it, you take them to the doctor, the doctor explains it, 
and you talk about, you know, the risk and all of that. And he has a full understanding of what it is. And he takes into account that y'all have been sleeping together for four years and he hasn't contracted it. Then he may be willing to stay. The bad part of this is every guy who's listening to this is going to be wondering if it's their girlfriend that wrote in with this question. No, it's not your your lady who wrote in with this question. But then at the same time, it's going to be a lot of women that y'all going to be wondering if your guy has it and hasn't told you. And men are more secretive than women. So I can tell you this. Most men will not tell you. So if you don't tell him, I respect the fact that you have a bad conscience, that you have a guilty conscience about it because it says that at your core, you're a good person. Like some women can have this and would not care, could not care any less about telling him and would just be totally 100% fine deceiving him and allowing him to just be in the blind. So the fact that you have a guilty conscience about it says that you are a good person. Yes, in marriage, everything should be on the table. Everything should be out there. So this will be a test of your love. If you decide to tell him, it definitely will be a test of the love and the bond. And, you know, he may try to treat you wrong if he if it really upsets him. And he may want to treat you wrong in the name of you lied to me. And you have to let him know, like, look, I understand I lied to you, but I'm not going to tolerate, you know, disrespect and being mistreated um, because this same situation could have been the other way around. And yes, you say you would have, yes, you can say you would have told me right away, but really, really be honest with yourself, really be honest with yourself and ask yourself how easy do you think it would have been to share this information. And so you have to help him, you know, put the shoe on the other foot, see life through your lenses and really get an understanding of how hard this is, how hard this is for you to tell him how hard it is to admit something like this and risk losing the love of your life. So think on that. And again, that's a personal choice. Uh, I cannot, with a clear conscience, condone um, deceit. You know, I can't condone deceit. Um, but I do understand that, you know, that that old saying, what you don't know won't hurt you how that still lives on in relationships. And I do believe in every relationship there may be one or two secrets that is never told because if there's not any bearing, you know, that telling that little bit of business will have on the relationship, if it won't help it, then why tell it? You know, so I understand people live by that sometimes, you know, I, I don't want to know all of my wife's secrets if it has nothing to do with me. Now, in your situation, you could have a miscalculation one one night and you could have a small breakout that you haven't even noticed yet. And it may just be one spot, you know, one area and it makes contact with him and then he contracts it. Or it could be something internal, you know, and he contracts it. Um, so it, you could have a miscalculation at some point, or you can have a time where it comes out against your will. Like you go through that period of time, that season where, you know, you have the breakout and you're married and you're living together and you can't hide it because if it lasts two weeks or a week or a day, I'm not sure how, how that works, but you know, if it lasts beyond a period of time that you can, you know, put on your granny panties and not be intimate, then he's going to question something. And if you go into the relationship and you get married and you're living together and you all have a habit of showering together, you know, or something like that, where it, you know, he can see with his own eyes or you have to answer a question on something, that could turn out to be even worse. So, you know, me personally, you've waited so long that you've built love. I think one of the almost impossible situations is telling someone before they have any love for you. But I think, you know, before, you know, I think when they have love for you, 
and they really love you, it's much harder for them to just walk away and they also see you in a different light. And that's one of the things that hinders a lot of relationships is we tell too much too soon. But you still have the, you know, the excuse of, I just didn't know how to say it. I mean, can can you imagine how you would tell someone this? And your main thing is making sure that he doesn't use it to abuse you or mistreat you and say, because you did this to me, I'm going to treat you like this and you have to deal with it because you don't understand what it's like to be me and be put in the situation that you put me in. So you have to deal with this disrespect and this mistreatment and this verbal, emotional, or physical abuse because of what you did. That is the main thing that you cannot tolerate. But other than that, I think that, you know, if you decide to tell them, you all can work through it if there's real love. And if it falls apart, then it's kind of a sign that the love just isn't strong enough and it probably would have fallen apart anyways even if you had never told him because love conquers all and knowing something like this love should be able to conquer this especially with the knowledge and understanding that this can be kept under control and it doesn't have to be contracted and spread Um, but some deal breakers may come up in this conversation because I don't know how that works as far as having kids and you know, being pregnant for for nine, 10 months and, you know, pushing a baby out. I don't know how it works, you know, concerning that. So if that's an issue, that may create a deal breaker. Um, But it's something that, you know, life has handed you and and, and we have to deal with the hand that life has dealt us and, and just pray for the best. And I believe if you're prayerful and you really want it to work, I believe it can work in your favor. And I respect you for even asking the question. I respect you for having a good heart and and even wanting to um, discuss it. And what I would also recommend is Google, Google it, how to tell my partner I have herpes because you may find a blog and a discussion forum with other people sharing their story on how they broke the news and how it was received. And you may see different takes and you may be able to identify a way that worked better than another. And uh, and this this is a very real issue. Thank you so much for that question. If you have a question for me, you just want an outside opinion, your brother from another mother, send it in to inbox at TonyGaskins.com, inbox at TonyGaskins.com, and make sure you visit TonyGaskinsAcademy.com Grab a course. You are just one course away from changing your life. I look forward to talking with you soon.